The Kira Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International of 27 Magdalene Street, Kira, Trinidad, West Indies presents Empowerment Through the Word. Come with us as we affect humanity with the life transforming power of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We invite you to stay tuned and be blessed. Lord, how that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be would say of my soul. There is no help for him in God. But thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. my head I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill I laid me down and I slept I await for the Lord to stay A shield for me, my glory, you lift my head. For thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. For thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, you lift my head. of people that set themselves against me round about. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. But now, O oh Lord, I will shield for me. My glory will lift my head. Thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Declare it today. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. of people that set themselves against me round about. But now, O oh Lord, I will shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But now, O oh Lord, I will shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Blessed be the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Indeed, I want to thank you for the privilege this morning of coming into your homes, into your cars, into your hotels, 
into your guest houses, into the place where you are quarantined, into the prisons, into the hospitals. Oh, listen to me, please. God has a word for you this morning. He has not forgotten you. He will not forsake you as long as you will call upon him. Certainly, this program is intended to cause us to trust again, to believe again, to hope again, to love again, to forgive again, to call upon God again. Amen. He has promised never to leave us nor forsake us so that we could boldly declare the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man will do unto me. Can you declare that this morning the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man would do unto me. God remains faithful. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. We want to continue this morning on that walk. And Colossians 2, 6 and 7. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. We continue. Walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Oh, the need to continue to be grateful to a gracious God. We give him thanks because he's good and his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And when we would look at the things that God has blessed us with and how gracious he has been to us. It is, it is enough to give him praise and glory rather than pondering on the things that you do not have. Come on, be grateful to Almighty God this morning. And then also, as we continue on the walking walk or living in that light, I'm looking also in the text from uh, or from the text, First Corinthians chapter two, verses four and five, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This morning, we want to look at walking in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. It is also mentioned in Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 5. Walk in wisdom. And the word wisdom comes from the original word, the Greek, the original language, one of the original languages of the Bible, Sophia. Sophia, wisdom. And of course, there are lots of um, people who've named, given that name to their children, girls, their girls, Sophia, wisdom. And this word takes upon itself a wide variety of meanings and maxims or proverbs, you see? 
and it it's used in a broad sense now there are number of words given for our english word wisdom now let me go into some of them and then we will have certainly scale down on what I believe the Spirit of God is giving and uh, has downloaded into me so that I can share with you. The word wisdom has to do with knowledge, intelligence, the science of learning, the ability to interpret dreams, Kill the, um, the management of affairs, discretion. Now, these are some of the words used for wisdom. If we contextualize it now from a biblical perspective, we would find that wisdom comes from at least three sources. The wisdom that comes from the wicked one, the enemy, of course, you know, Jesus spoke about him. His aim is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. John chapter 10 and verse 10, the devil. What do we find in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6? The enemy in speaking to Eve says, yes, I know what God says, but he doesn't want you to partake of the tree because if you do so, you will know you will know, you see the ability, you, you, you'll know the difference between good and evil. You see? So he sought to bring about, he, 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 he placed, as it were, the words before her and sought to get into her spirit. In to, you will know knowledge. You would have wisdom. In fact, you would know good from evil. Then, that's Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And I want to encourage you to get into the Word of God. You see? Then, the wisdom that comes from man. Of course, certainly, it's worldly wisdom. Paul says, he says, he says, for my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of the power of God, so that your faith will not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Absolutely important. If you're going to find God, we all must come God's way. It is through faith in Jesus Christ. I know I'm running ahead of myself, as it were, but it, it must be God's way. Notice what he says. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. So you got wisdom that flows from men, from men, really good. Be able to put the, uh, uh, mix it up well, package it well, and then make a presentation. The silver tongue, a red tree, very good. But that is far from finding God's salvation. Then there's the wisdom that comes from God. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 21. For the preaching of the cross 
is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. And here, God's idea of salvation comes our way. How he brings it to mankind. So, we're going to it again. The wisdom that flows from the wicked one. He wants you to get into things that he knows that you don't know about. But he says, go for it. He just shows, quote unquote, the good. He presents that to you only to realize that it's going to lead to our destruction. But thank God for Jesus Christ. So what do we find? Wisdom has to do with the science of learning. Acts chapter 7 and verse number 22. Then wisdom also has to do, as mentioned before, with the interpreting of dreams and giving the best advice, according to Acts chapter 7 and verse number 10. Wisdom also has to do with the skill in the management of affairs, Acts chapter 6 and verse number 3. Choose among men, full of the Holy Ghost and of wisdom. Wisdom also has to do with discretion. Skill and discretion in imparting truth. But you see, truth comes with knowing Jesus Christ. In fact, he says, I am the way the truth and the life and no man comes unto the father but by me john chapter 14 and verse number six truth the bible mentions also sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth john chapter 17 and verse number 17. Wisdom also has to do with the knowledge and the practice for godly living. Wisdom. Jesus mentions in Matthew the 7th chapter from the 24th verse unto the 27th when he says he that heareth these sayings of mine and do it them. I would liken him unto the man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the winds blew, and the floods came, and it did not fall, the house did not fall, because it was founded upon the rock. And of course, he went on to give the flip side. He says, you hear these things of mine and you do not apply them. You do not practice them. You do not see them as the requisite for godly living. Then I would liken you as to the man who built his house upon the sand. When the rains came and the winds blew, and the floods came up. It was no more. Why? Because it was built upon the sand. And sand is constantly shifting, but the rock remains steady. Of course, there's no doubt we must equate the rock to Jesus the Christ. If we build upon him, our lives will never be the same again. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. So what do we find? This wisdom, we spoke about the wisdom that comes from the wicked one, the wisdom that comes from man, but we want to emphasize the wisdom that comes from Almighty God. God. How does he come 
to us. Of course, this has to do with that supreme intelligence that comes from him. His divine plan providing salvation for all men. And this is what it boils down to. Because Paul says, when I came to you, I came to know nothing among you. And I'm presenting nothing more than Jesus Christ and him crucified. This is the end all and the beat all. What's the purpose? It is presenting Jesus Christ in all his glory, declaring the mystery of God. It is presenting him. He says, my speech and my preaching. But prior to that, he says, I, I want to know nothing more. And I'm presenting to you nothing more than Jesus Christ and him crucified. In other words, he's talking about the cross. Jesus mentions in John the 12th chapter and the 32nd verse, he said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, while some may be seeking of the prosperity Heritage of God and the goodness of God and all that I can get from him. When God gave Jesus Christ, he gave his best. In fact, we are told in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter and the 32nd verse, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Yes, Paul went on to say that the, the Greeks were after wisdom and knowledge. The Jews were after a sign. He said, but we preach Christ. We present Christ who is the wisdom of God. Then he went on to strengthen it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 30. But of him are we in Christ Jesus, who of God, God gave him. He is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. So Christ is the power of God. Christ is also the wisdom of God. Hence the reason I emphasize again for the preaching of the cross, Unto them who are perishing, it is foolishness. Yes, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. Jesus Christ makes all the difference in our lives. He is the wisdom of God. Yes, so we are called upon to walk in wisdom. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 5. Walk as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. Will you make him today your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, Will you seek him? Will you call upon him this morning? He has your life. He knows what you're going through. He has the best in store for you. Why not call upon him this morning? 
Praise be unto God. I want to give you the opportunity to do so. It's prayer time. That's right. Would you pray after me, please? Would you say after me? And it flows from the heart this morning. Let it do so. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I repent of my sins this morning. I repent of my wisdom this morning. And allow your wisdom to flow in me and through me. I allow you, Jesus, to do so. Come into my life now and save me. I confess you now as my Savior and as my Lord. And I believe in my heart that you are alive and alive forevermore. So thank you for saving me and writing my name in your book of life. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. So let us pray now together. Know that you are son of God, a daughter of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, because it, you have declared it this morning. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for those who have prayed that prayer. And now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask that you will reveal yourself to them as only you can. Make the pages of the Bible real and alive to them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, let prayer become their watchword as it were, as they call upon you, and meet the needs in their lives, I pray, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Oh God, we continue to speak against sicknesses and diseases and pains, the spirit of fear, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Show yourself strong on their behalf, I pray. And my Father, I ask that you would continue to endow our leaders with godly wisdom, skill, knowledge, understanding, the management of the affairs of this blessed land in the name of Jesus the Christ. I want to thank you today for meeting the needs today. Hallelujah. Oh God, I even pray now, I continue to speak against the virus. Yes, in the name of Jesus the Christ. While they're, 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 they're busy after a vaccine, oh God. God, we continue to speak against it in Jesus' name for its eradication, for the glory of God. Continue to protect and preserve the frontline people, our doctors and our nurses. Oh God, let your grace be seen today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord. Thank you again. Remember, we are not going under. Why? Because Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Have a blessed week. Amen and amen.